Welcome back. It's still the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Moving on to our first major discussion right here on the breakfast. And after last year blaming middlemen for the rising costs of local foodstuff, accusing them of creating artificial scarcity, President Buhari, um, through the Federal Executive Council Wednesday, barred foreigners from directly buying agricultural produce from Nigerian farmers, instead handing the deal to indigenous middlemen. The move means that henceforth only licensed and duly registered local buying agents can pr produce uh, directly or procure directly from farmers in Nigeria. The presidency, through the Minister of Trade and Industry, Nia Debayo, uh, has also directed the Attorney General to draft a legislation supporting the policy. With the policy, the Buhari administration is hoping to tackle challenges of underpricing of agricultural products from Nigeria's farmers and preventing foreign buyers uh, from branding Nigerian farm produce as made in their country's nests. And look at the thinking behind this policy shift and its implications for the Nigerian economy. Uh, we have joining us live on uh, the breakfast via Zoom, uh, Prince Wale Oyekoya. He is an agriculturalist and the MD CEO of Bama Farms. Uh, Prince Wale Oyekoya, nice to have you on the program this morning. Nice to have you, man. Good morning. W what's the thinking behind this policy? Something that we have not heard about before. What is the thinking behind the move the federal government saying foreigners cannot procure directly from farmers in the country? I don't think it's a policy in the right direction, in the sense that what we produce in Nigeria, 60% of it got rotten through wetting. But these people, the foreigners that you are trying to buy from buying our farm produce, they add value to what we cannot add value. And for them to be banned, to be buying our produce, it's going to be a counterproductive. In the sense that that is the least of the problem of farmers now are days. What happened to the commodity price control? Why is the price control? There's nothing like price control in Nigeria. That is why you see all kind of stuff just coming into the market. And no one is regulating it, no one is controlling it. So it's not the issue of foreigners coming to more for what we have at the farm gate, but the policy that is going to be sustainable to really assist the farmers and to bring the price of goods down completely because most Nigerians are complaining about the price of the food stock, coupled with all the infrastructure deficit, coupled with all the uh, all kind of other stuff like the security and bandit, uh, price of crude oil, price of fuel, price of diesel. Right now, this is about six hundred naira plus. The government is not addressing this, and these are the multiplier effect that is going to happen on the, on the consumers. So, to me. The foreigners are not a problem. We are the problem of ourselves, and this policy is not going to be sustained. They need to do other more things to really bring more farmers back to the force, because most of the farmers we have today, they are folding up like, like parachutes. Most of them are folding up because they couldn't cope with the policy of the government, the ease of government, uh, the ease of doing business in Nigeria that the government are really um, uh, talking about. It's not really working. Okay, uh, um, so, so, so you're saying that this is not a well thought out policy by the federal government. Of course, you are an agriculturalist, you are on the field, you have the experience, you know what's going on right now. Um, but the word being used by the Buhari administration and by the minister who announced this at the end of that federal executive council meeting is underpricing. So they're saying that the agricultural produce from Nigeria is being underpriced. Um, isn't this, this a problem from your experience? There's no doubt about that it's under pricing. But what we are talking about, if there's a price control, the government, we used to have a commodity price control. What happened to the commodity board? That's why they need to bring back. It's the same government that created this commodity board. Yes, it's under price. And people just bring whatever they want to the market, but banning the... Okay, you say you buy the foreign and buy for, from us. So what if I, if I work for a white man? And he sent me as a procure officer. Go to the market, go and buy this thing for me. Is it not the same thing? So burning there to buy our farm produce from the farm gate is not the it's not the solution. The solution is for them to really, even the minister that is talking about, what does he know about agriculture? Does he even really know what the farmers are going through? Does he know that there's no funding coming to the farmers? Does he even know anything about the climate change? 
Right now, a lot of farmers are not producing because of the climate change. They are not addressing this issue. Where we supposed to have uh, drip irrigation or any form of irrigation, they are not addressing it. So, burning the foreigner is just like burning Nigeria also doing business in, in most of these advanced countries. How are we going to cope? There are supposed, supposed to be a balance of trade between between a, a country and other countries where you are doing businesses. But for you to buy them, it's not going to be sustainable. Okay, um, um, let's also look at this because we have um, some quotas who are saying that this is supposed to ensure food security for the nation. Of course, you find out that some commodities are really very, I mean, scarce. And you find out that if, as much as we say that, yes, we are great on agriculture and its produce, we still find scarcity of some of this commodity. And it doesn't make sense, uh, you know, for a country as Nigeria, where it feels like at the end of the day, we're not able to produce what we can even consume, not to even talk about exporting. That's because we have, you know, that market. Now, in 2013, there's a report where garlic was being bought from one of the markets, I mean, the farms in Kaduna or Kani, if I'm not mistaken. And the foreigner that came, uh, they had to pack it in bags as if they branded it. Don't you think that this is supposed to protect the agricultural sector? I mean, you know, protect the farmers and our interests and also ensure food security? I don't think so. I believe there should be a, a competition in the world. The foreigners are here to challenge us. And what are we doing to add value to what we are producing? So it should be a form of encouragement by government to the small business, to the small scale businesses that, oh, we need to add value to what we are doing. If we are adding value to what we are doing and we're able to export, the foreigner will not come and be taking advantage of us. But because the government have really neglected their main purpose of producing food and encouraging farmers. So the farmers, I mean, the foreigners are taking advantage. And I don't even believe that. How many foreigners are we even talking about that is mopping what we have? Go to the market, go to most of our local markets, you still find some of this food, food stuff. But some of them are getting rotten. But these white people or these foreigners, they came in to add value to what we are throwing away as garbage. 60% of our stuff end up in the garbage. And it's not supposed to be so. So we should be encouraging. You can imagine how many people that these foreign people that you are talking about, how many people they employ, how many Nigerians that were employed. So there's more to be done to really improve the food production in the country than to be buying some set of people from doing business or buying some of our farm products. Like, we should be encouraging them to come and do what we call uh, the powder eggs. Some of our eggs, there's something they say is doing the glut. I could say that's a glut when there's not enough eggs in the circulation. So they should encourage these white people, okay, don't take this into your country. Bring the industry, bring your machineries to the country and produce and employ our people instead of just banning them completely. But to me, it's our policy. So, uh, Prince Wale uh, Oyekoya, what the government is saying that the fact that you have foreigners having a direct interface with the farmers, at most times, you, you, you might want to agree with me that these farmers might not really understand the dynamics of the market, just as they come to the local market, because that's the farm gate. The buyers, you know, they buy the same price where you have other uh, persons within the country buying. Uh, I mean, it's not supposed to be so. Like I mentioned earlier on, in that 2013, you have um, this foreigner who came in as a representative, not necessarily as, uh, you know, he came as a representative, coming to buy directly from the farms. And in the bags that were packing it, he had made in... A certain country so so i mean don't you think that this is supposed to protect because i i'm thinking that this is actually good that the government is trying to you know to protect the agricultural sector the farmers right now from exploitation of you know foreigners and also ensure that we're able to produce uh, for our consumption and then before we begin to think about exporting well as good as the policy might be I keep on saying that is it sustainable? These are the government that just made policy today. Tomorrow it will be changed. Sooner we are going to have a change of government. <clears throat> Another government will come in and say no and abolish this thing. So I'm talking of sustainable and implementation of some of this government policy. So by the time you send away your customer, which are the foreign base we are talking about, <clears throat> when the new government comes, what will happen? What happened to our products? Some of these products get bad in the, in the, in the farm and looking for, for customers. 
So to me, I don't blame any farmer that wanted to send to foreign as long as you just get out of their farm instead of getting uh, spoiled or the bandits or the herdsmen will bring their cow and eat some of your produce in the farm. So they would rather send it away to people that are available, that are ready, so that they can just get something for their, for, for, for their business. The government should be addressing where the where the herdsmen come to the farm and eat the farm produce and with no compensation, with no insurance to pay for it. So to make farmers sell it to the to the foreigners, they are not doing it willingly, but for them to be able to get something out of what they, they have in the farm before the, the cow or the cattle come and eat them. That is what I'm saying. I'm not saying the policy is not good. I'm not saying the policy should not be should not be implemented, but can it be implemented? Can it be sustainable? It's okay. just the summer spot policy that I'm talking about here. All right. So, uh, how 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 has, how does uh, this this uh, policy as a, as affect you as a farmer? I want I want us to get practical now. Um, in your business, if you hear or there comes a situation where you need to go through middlemen or anyone who wants to buy from you who is coming from outside Nigeria has to go through middlemen. It means that you as a farmer do not inter interface with a foreigner. And how do you think this will affect you on a day-to-day -day basis in practical terms? Definitely it's affecting. Right now it's even affecting me that I have a whole lot of pineapples in the, in the farm. I'm talking almost about 50 acres of pineapple that I have in the market, that I have in my farm. I'm looking for middlemen to buy it because the security is not there for me. Sometimes I even, I even try to look at the time that I have to go to my farm so that I will not be kidnapped. So some of our colleagues in my area have been kidnapped. So when you can have, when you already planted this thing that take over a year to grow, and you, and you find somebody that says, okay, I'm going to mop up everything in your farm. Are you going to be dictating that, oh, you're a foreigner, I'm not sell to you? So until the government can really take care of all the infrastructure deficits, like the security uh, and lies, we could be able to process our farm produce. But the conditions there is not even conducive. Where there's no diesel, where there's no electricity to even do your processing. With my 50 acres of land of pineapple, I should be processing juices. But come to my area, there's no light. Now, if I want to go into diesel uh, processing, you know how much the diesel is now? 600 and 600 naira plus. So these are the reasons that most of the farmers will rather sell to the middlemen instead of getting into unnecessary debts. Because some of us take loan. So if you cannot be able to pay your loan, you'll not be able to sell your produce. They are in trouble. But I mean, sh sh yeah. shouldn't you be happy uh, with this? Bearing in mind that um, the idea here is to make sure that you can get a higher price for your pineapple. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, get me wrong. I'm not saying the policy is not good. What I'm saying is that is this sustainable? With the kind of government we have, government come, government go. Another government will come tomorrow, and some of these foreigners, if they really. Uh, invested in their in their in their politics, things will change. Then the farmer will go back again to the square one. I'm not saying the policy is not good. Don't get me wrong. As long as it could be implemented well and be sustainable and have people's oriented policy, not that some kind of politicians have interest in what is going on. That is my point. I'm not saying the policy is not is not good. But but, but, but should be able to be sustainable. Um, Prince Wale, don't we have, yes. I mean, or uh, you're an agriculturalist, and uh, sure. there should be, because, I mean, you have different association. Uh, don't you have some kind of association who should be speaking and protecting the interest of these farmers? Uh, we have seen that uh, recently in Nigerians are taking to protesting, and which has been a policy, uh, even though to some extent it hasn't yielded any kind of result to some sectors, especially if you look at the educational mm -hmm. sector. But uh, don't you have a, a body that should be speaking for farmers and those who are involved in agricultural concerns? We have so many bodies. We have so many organizations bordering along the agricultural sector, but some of them have been hijacked. Let me be very honest with you. We have so many. We have Poultry Farm Association. We have our Farmers Association. We have Rice Pea Production. We have Cardfish Association, but some of these people, some of the executives we have, I'm being honest with you, 
they are supposed to be fighting for for the farmers. But when they get to a certain stage, when they cannot even fight for themselves, when they come to the free for all, when they even have their own produce in the farm that they cannot sell, we do communicate. We do have platforms that will be looking for buyers. And uh, most of the local farmers we have also they are not different from this foreign foreign farmer and uh, foreign buyers, but they will. They will buy from you instead of them to pay you on time to go back to the farm and do the right thing. It might take them three months, four months, six months to pay back for your produce. So when you see a foreigner coming to mop every day, it might be of a lower price. But it is better for you to get something lower than you get everything and damage or destroy in your farm. So now that we don't have any association, we do have a lot of money. Okay. All right. Interesting. Uh, um, these people called the middlemen. Um, last year, the president blamed them for the rising cost of, of local foodstuff. He accused them of creating artificial scarcity. It's a middleman the president is banking on to uh, have a, an increased um, price for our products uh, before they're taken out of the country. Um, who are these middlemen and um, why are they so important? Do you, uh, do you interface with them, interact with them you know, regularly as a farmer in Nigeria? These middlemen are not foreigners. They are Nigerians like us. Like sometimes they bag our local rice that are, that are very good products and go and change the bag into foreign bags. I've seen it happening. These are not foreigners. These are our own people. These are Nigerians that do this. So the middlemen we are talking about, we, most of us are the middlemen. Especially people that have money, you can easily go to the farm and buy your stuff and repackage it. Either you repackage as a whole or you add value by processing. So when you talk of middlemen, if you have your money today, yes, you, are, you can be a middleman. Middle you can be one of the middlemen to come and buy the produce and repackage and do whatever you want. But what I'm trying to say is that the government are there looking at these people, they packaging this thing into foreign bags, what they do. So, so you, are you saying that the middlemen themselves are also part of those who uh, are, you know, repackaging some of the products uh, as made overseas when they actually are made in Nigeria? Is that what you say? Definitely. I'm very sure of this one. I've seen this several times, especially when I was the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry. We go around to see things for ourselves. We are the problem of ourselves. It's not the foreigners. All right. So, if, yeah. government, if the government really see that they really need to help farmers, it should be within us first and see that the right thing is being done within our citizens. Within the so called middlemen, 90% of the middlemen you are talking about Nigeria is the middlemen that buy this and are going to sell it to the foreigners. Most of the foreigners does not come to the farm directly hmm. at all. All right. Okay. I know all this. I know this. I know all this for facts. Prince uh, Wale Oyekoya. Uh, Let's talk about the fact that the agricultural sector, I mean, it's something that's been on the news over time. The fact that the farm produce that we get to export outside of Nigeria usually does not meet international standards. We, we get to that point where uh, we hear that several goods have been rejected because they don't meet the international standards uh, for the market. Why is that the issue, especially with Nigeria? As I said, it's still bogged down on the policy of our government. It's still bogged down on the, on the leadership. Because, yes, I remember so many times that 47 of our items were banned in the UK. The UK that's supposed to be our ally, that's supposed to be our partner, that's supposed to be our colonial masters. The same thing in the US. The same thing I remember one time when some people tried to export yam to the US, everything got rotten, almost about 10 containers. And nothing is being done today. So when you see foreigners coming, to buy some of these products, they reinvent it, they reproduce it, they repackage it, they add value. And this is what I'm expecting our government to really look into that, okay, if this is the problem, why can't you solve our problem internally? So for, for other countries rejecting our products, it's not the farmer, it's the policy. And if you look at the policy we are talking about, is the ease of doing business that the, the federal government has been talking about. But there's nothing like ease of doing business in Nigeria. When you talk of ease of doing business and you go to the pump and you buy a diesel of 600 naira plus, all the manufacturing companies are moving out of Nigeria to the neighboring countries. These are what the, the government should be addressing that. Why are companies, why are all these conglomerate companies 
blue ships are moving out of Nigeria to other countries. Something is wrong. So, so you're Even saying that. So you're people. saying that the fact that you know the goods, uh, the fat produced that we have in Nigeria being exported don't meet international standards is because of the policies of government. Uh, how can you be more explicit with that? What I mean by this is that yes, it's due to the policy because when you want to export something, that's the procedures you, you, you take. You see that when you go to some of these export promotion councils, instead of them to do the right thing, if you don't breathe the elbow, if you don't give them money, they will not come to your factory, they will not come to your warehouse to inspect what you have. It's just like what just somebody said they will be bad food that will that enter into the country. How did they enter into the country? To the extent that it went to the circulation, the same thing with export, bringing all its imports. So, but the, the same thing applies when you are trying to export your produce. They don't really do much of the necessary inspection, but they just sit down in the office as long as the price is right. These are the policies that need to be changed. You can imagine how many black we got damaged with the bad import of fuel that, that enter into the country. I have so many friends that they are black got damaged. So, the same thing when you are trying to export some of these farm produce. What you go through from these people alone, some of these people got rotten before it even take off to the, to the other country. You can imagine a perishable item that's supposed to live within a day, within 24 hours. Sometimes it takes about two weeks before you get approval from the, from the NACO, from the airport, from everywhere, from where you are, we are going to uh, export this thing. It takes weeks. So by the time it's leaving our uh, shop, by the time we get to the other shop right there, it's already rotting. It's already getting bad. All right. We, 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 have, we have to leave it at that. I'm afraid uh, Prince Wello Yekoya, thank you very much for your time. He is an agriculturalist and the managing director and chief executive of South Bama Farms. A really, really uh, on the hands and uh, practical um, analysis is giving us on this particular issue. Thank you very much uh, for your time, sir. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Right, all right. We have more uh, this morning on the breakfast. Of course, um, the Senate saying no to President Buhari. We have a guest uh, uh, analyst joining us to discuss this. Mercy, expunging Section sec section 84, and uh, the Senate said no. Mm. Well, we'll just find out, you know, because this, this is actually a rare, you know, case with the Ninth Assembly. I mean, looking at the fact that the Ninth Assembly has been described as a rubber stamp. Well, let's find out what went, uh, you know, different. I mean, what really happened. We'll be right back after this time. Please stay with us.